Comic-Con. My name is Kate Hahn. I will be your moderator. I'm a journalist, and I cover Vikings for TV Guide magazine. Before I bring out the amazing creator of the show and this incredible cast who brings these characters to life, we want to show you a quick recap of what we've seen so far in the 20 episode season four. So from the first 10, let's take a look. I ordered the arrest of Floki for the murder of Athelstan. You are for Christ, you're all died. You made me suffer, and now I shall make you suffer. I want to go out into the wilderness, find out if I can survive. I should have done this a long time ago. making myself king of all Norway. But in order to become king of all Norway, you would have to overthrow my husband. We leave for Paris in three weeks to the day. When my brother returns, everything will be decided. We're the masters now! I will not betray Paris, and I will not betray my wife. When everyone wanted you dead, I kept you alive! Victory! One of us will die today, and it won't be me. Our father abandoned us, we were just kids, and he ran off. I love our father as much as you do. If he ever came back, I would kill him. <gasps> me too. Despite all his failing, he's still the greatest man in the world to me. the show all by himself, no writing staff, the incredible Michael Hurst. <laughs> Woo! Next, as Ragnar, we have Travis Vimmel. As Lagertha, Catherine Winnick. Love the Viking horns, you guys. <laughs> no. I don't trust these boys. <laughs> Catherine's very smart. <laughs> Nobody wants She's to. learned over the years. They're pranksters. Uh-huh. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> What's up, come a comb? So, uh, Travis, we could ask you, what is up with Ragnar? He, he's always been like, to him, his family's been the most important. <laughs> <laughs> so, somebody put vodka in this water. <laughs> and I'm drinking it all! <laughs> Save all your questions, Alex, till the end. See, it's, uh, it's already it's started. It's far more interesting. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hand it down, mate. <laughs> you can handle so, it. <laughs> Pass it down. Uh. So, uh, Travis, Ragnar, uh, you know, after the, the battle in Paris, oh, yeah. he did not go back to his family. He abandoned them. Oh, thank God. Where did he go? Why? Well... 
<laughs> um, I, I didn't think I bannered him. I, uh, I didn't feel wanted. He uh, went for a wood wank. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I think the, the pressure and everything, he just didn't want to have that pressure. And he, everything he sort of seemed to love um, got killed or felt, he, uh, Ragnar felt betrayed him in some way. And I uh, just had enough. And uh, I'm not exactly sure where he went. You'd have to ask Michael. Sorry, we didn't bring yeah. his translator here today. <laughs> <laughs> Do some sign language. Do you? Could I? Could I? Say yeah, yes, Michael. Please jump in if you'd love to fill us in on what this guy was doing. We'd love to hear it. Um, I don't know what he did. Um, Viking society was a meritocracy by and large, and which meant that. You would only continue to rule, to be an earl or to be a king, if you were successful, uh, if you provided uh, good ships and uh, successful raiding parties for your people. And if you weren't, you would be killed and replaced by the, uh, the strongest uh, uh, Viking in, in, in the tribe. And Ragnar's case was different. Ragnar had been defeated. Uh, and uh, big time. But the problem for the people around him was that Ragnar was now the most famous Viking in the world. So there wasn't going to be anyone who was going to kill him. And he made a decision, in my mind at least, that the shame was too great to live amongst his, his people. And he disappeared, and in a sense he wanted to disappear from history. Um, but he came back, he comes back for two reasons. One is that he wants to know what happened to his sons, how his sons turned out. We know that his sons meant a huge amount to him. And the other reason he comes back is that he has unfinished business in Wessex with King Egbert. And uh, I don't know, if I, was, uh, uh, if I was a fan of the show rather than its writer, the one thing that I would really like to see in, uh, during the next 10 episodes is another meeting between King Eg Egbert and Ragnar Lossbrook. Yeah. Two very different characters, two kings, but who found they had an affinity to, if, if Travis will forgive me, great actors. And uh, I would really, really uh, like to see how that relationship pans out, if, if the gods will it. Well, if Michael wants to see it, I think we might get to see it too. <laughs> um, Catherine, uh, we're talking about a lot of kings here. But Lagertha is a very, very powerful female character. <laughs> Do you think Lagertha feels like she would really be the best person to rule the Vikings? Ooh. Well, first of all, it is so great to see you guys here. Thank you. Yeah. I swear to God, it gets, the room gets bigger and bigger every year, and now this is our fourth, fifth Comic-Con, and it's just, fourth. it's amazing to see all you guys here, so thank you. Yes. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Together with the shields. We got the shield maidens yeah. out there. I love it. <laughs> all right. Oh, there's a lag of the shields. <laughs> And a horn. <laughs> um, no, I think that's one great thing about how Michael Hurst writes is he writes strong women characters. And it's been such a blessing to be able to play a, such a, a rich um, woman and who's not only a leader in her own right, but also a mother and has gone through her own issues and conflicts through being a woman and a woman in position of strength. and. Um, and that's what's always been 
kind of a challenge to play. And to answer the question, I'm not sure if she is really looking for power that motivates her. I think she always wants to follow her original dream that she had with Ragnar, which was to have settlements in different lands and for to make smart decisions for her people. And, um, and I like kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> And you do, and you do kick ass. <laughs> it's fun, kind of fun. <laughs> well, um, uh, another big ass kicker on the show is Rolo. <laughs> Woo! So, so Clive, how does it feel to have betrayed your people? <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> Okay, well, at the end of, of season three, there was a scene when it was, it was decided who was going to stay in France. Um, and I think it was clear that the reason why Rollo stays is there's nothing for him in Kattegat anymore. There's nothing, you know, he has, they're not his people anymore. Um, and I think he has to, I think he goes there, he, 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 he moves, he always, he always goes forwards first without thinking and he, he has this proposition, this, this premonition, and, and, and the seer tells him that there's something waiting for him in Paris. That's all he knows, and he has to make it work. And I think he has to embrace their culture, embrace the people of France, and they become his people. He's just, he's a, he's a man that just wants to be accepted, and he never finds it with his brother. He never finds it. I mean, Bjorn is probably the only person that he has any affinity with. Um, <laughs> and I think that I think what he finds in Paris is is Charles, who is is a father figure, is the first person that believes in him, that actually thinks that he has some kind of worth, and and lets him run with the ball, and that's all he's ever really wanted in his life, and and therefore that gives him enough to invest in those people, and then on top of that he meets Princess Gisler, and he's fascinated by her. Um, so I'm not sure if he, you know, he has to take on board the, the fashions and, and the etiquette of the Frankish court in order to succeed, but I don't think he really thinks of himself as betraying his people, because you can't really betray What people. about the being a shit brother thing? Sometimes talking to Travis feels like I'm on Charlie Brown. <laughs> 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 it's actually, uh, it is Clive's birthday today, though, on a serious note. Happy birthday, Clive. It's, it is Clive's birthday, so I thought it would be really nice <laughs> if we could all maybe sing to Clive for his birthday. This is probably the biggest group of people he will ever have sing to him for his birthday. <laughs> so Travis yeah. has said he would lead us off. Uh, 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 I've got an amazing yeah. voice. So, ready you guys? Uh, happy uh, birthday to you. Uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, happy birthday, dear Clive. Uh, happy birthday to you. School! You guys are awesome. And there you have it, you see? No one's ever done anything like that for me. <laughs> I'd betray anybody for you guys. <laughs> You're my family. <laughs> Happy, birthday! Happy birthday! Woo! Happy birthday to everybody. What's your name? <laughs> Happy birthday, Patricia. Yeah. Happy birthday! Woo! Oh, good job. Well, Alexander Ludwig, that was, that was a very benevolent, king-like move. Um, now, we saw in the clip that Bjorn survived the wilderness. He outsmarted an assassin. He didn't hesitate to take on the role of judge when it came to sentencing Floki. <clears throat> doesn't he kind of seem like, doesn't he kind of seem like the perfect king to you? I, I think he'd make a better queen, to be honest. <laughs> That's actually my answer. <laughs> <laughs>
Just, just a queen. Yeah, it's a queen. Yeah, <laughs> you think maybe outfitting him and maybe some of the Lagertha clothes. Are you a little jealous of what Catherine gets to wear? Yeah, have you seen? You want a dress? It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Body wash. Perfect. I'll lend you one of mine. Uh, no, I'd, I'd, I'd say, um, you know, this this whole season is the reason I signed up to be uh, on the show, um, season four, <laughs> A and B. Um, it's Bjorn is totally coming to his own now, uh, and I think that. It was slower in these in these ten, but it was all. And you said this earlier, Gustav. But it's all leading up to a huge payoff in these next ten. And I've never been more excited for a season on this show. And I think you guys can all look forward to a really, really crazy and intense next ten episodes. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if the first ten are any indication, you know, we're we're gonna get uh, some amazing stuff. And and some of the scenes that were really difficult to watch involved Gustav's character Floki when you were in that cave and your arms were up and you were uh -huh. tied to the ceiling. I mean, it just looked miserable. Tell us a little bit about what it was like to shoot that. Was it as miserable to shoot as it looked on screen? Um. Yeah. Well, it was. I had to like kind of starve myself a little bit to look kind of, you know, skinny and all. And uh, so the physical aspect of it was pretty tough. Um, and also, because I was like chained up like that with these ropes and my nerve got squeezed. So I actually lost my, the sense of my thumb for, for like two months. Uh, <laughs> but that was nothing compared to the, the mental preparation I had to do to, to um, portray the, the feeling of losing a child. Um, that was that was the tough part. That so nothing nothing was worse than that, because I think that's the worst thing a person can experience. Do you, do you think that's changed, Floki? The all the that pain that he's yeah been through? totally um, totally changed him. Um, a part of him died with his daughter for sure, and I think that over the next ten episodes that we've seen already, he's been kind of lost and kind of confused and disorientated a little bit. Um, so I think, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a bit lost at the moment, poor Floki, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Yeah, I like that. It's <laughs> a buzzkill. All of us are, are lost in some ways because we're wondering what happened during that time period when Ragnar was gone. You know, lots happened to all these characters. Michael, we jumped ahead big time at that mid-season finale. So. What can you tell us? Will we now go full steam ahead with the story, or will we see some flashbacks to what happened during that time period? No, um, uh, it, it was very important to me that we, this, in my mind, this was always uh, a show about Ragnar Lothbrok and his sons. And I wanted the sons to come on. So the, the jump forward in time just gave sufficient time for Ragnar to lick his wounds and his sons to become young men. So uh, I, I don't want to look back at the period um, when Ragnar was, as it were, in the wilderness. And, and I think the other important thing to say about that is, is that no one claimed uh, particularly the throne or, or, or tried to push at the time because Aslag had left the throne uh, empty on the, on the days, and there was an expectation that perhaps, un, uh, unless they got word to the, the contrary, that Ragnar <coughs> would come back, and as I say, he was the most famous uh, king, Viking in Scandinavia at the, at, the, at the time. So we've done the jump forward before, and it worked tremendously well. I wasn't afraid of, of, of doing it again, and it enabled us to cast four young guys as Ragnar's sons. Uh, we know that the historic Ragnar was only apparently afraid of one thing, and that that was his sons would become more famous than he was. And indeed, two of the sons, uh, Bjorn Ironside uh, and Ivor the Boneless, did become and still are uh, incredibly famous Vikings. Bjorn Ironside for sailing around the Mediterranean um, and Bjorn uh, and uh, Ivor the Boneless for notorious cruelty, uh, actually. Um, 
Shall I tell my story about? Yes, um, my, Michael has a, quite an interesting story to tell about um, an archaeological dig that he went on that involved the Vikings. Yeah, I heard. Um, this is, you know, one of the great things about this show is, is that it's based on real things and real people. And it was good for me to get my hands dirty and, and, and to join in an archaeological dig at a site at a place called Repton in the Midlands in England, where a great Viking army led by Ivor the Boneless uh, had their winter camp uh, not long after these events. And they found three Viking graves in, in, in the camp uh, under mounds. One contained the bodies of uh, the bones, the skulls and bones of 500 warriors. And it's interesting to note that 750 of them, uh, sorry, <laughs> that three quarters of them were male warriors and a quarter were female warriors. That's right. Um, <laughs> they found another they found another grave which contained four juveniles from seven to 17, and they'd been sacrificial victims. And the third grave was what was called the warrior grave, um, of a tall uh, warrior, badly mutilated, um, but with his sword and ax around. And he may be possibly either the, the boneless, uh, and if so, I've held the tooth of Ivor the Boneless in my hand. But the thing was that they did some more uh, exploration <coughs> recently and discovered there were probably two other tombs. So I paid them a little bit of money so, so these academics could go back and volunteers could go back and, and dig up these tombs. And I went on two days. And they found that they dug away and they'd revealed a, a mound so that with every indication that, that this was a significant burial. And they'd also found some Viking ship nails in the mound, which suggested, it was very exciting, because it suggested whoever was buried there was important and had been buried in a ship, which would mean that that was the first ship burial that had ever been discovered in, in England. Wow. And I did, um, I was digging away my first morning as an archaeologist, and I, and I found, I dug up a little, bit of metal about four inches long and I said to the professor I think I found another ship's nail and he said he looked at it and he said actually I think this is a Viking arrowhead and the amazing thing about this is that only four Viking arrowheads have ever been found in England so and I, it, 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 it suggests even more that this was an important grave and these were grave goods that were thrown into to the grave so half an hour later, I dug up a second one. You not play finders keepers? And, uh, <laughs> and the professor came, and I showed it to the professor, and he oh. came over, and then his face fell. Put it in fell. your pocket, Michael, and take it home. <laughs> his face <laughs> fell, and he said, I've been digging for 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you have been here for three and a half hours. <laughs> You should have just put stuff in your pockets and thrown it out and been like, yeah. oh my God, look what I'm Anyway, doing. that's my story. Uh, and, and, um, yeah. yeah, so not only is he a great writer, he's now an archaeologist. So, uh, well, speaking of ship snails, weapons, we saw an incredible battle in the first half of season four. This, this, fight between Ragnar and Rollo, which was supposed to be a fight to the death, but it was not. So Clive and, and Travis, if you want to jump in and talk about what it was like to shoot that scene, it was, it was really incredible to watch. It was all Travis's idea, actually. Um, they, um, they, they choreographed a fight for us with swords. Um, and it just didn't really, I mean, we built this fight up for so long that we just didn't, well, Travis was the first to come up with the idea. Just did, we'd done loads of sword fights in this show, and it was really dynamic, and, and, and it, was a, it, was, it was great choreography, but it wasn't really about the story between Ragnar and Rollo, and Ragnar, uh, and um, Travis kind of came up with this great idea just to simplify it. Travis. What? Do you <laughs> I want to tell your story. Did you ask me a question? But it was Travis's, uh, it was your idea to kind of just break it down into just um, first brother to fight. fool losers. Yeah, and 
We didn't want to disappoint the fans where I feel like somebody had to die as well. And if we were with swords, somebody's really gonna... One of us would have been dead. And, and we knew that we were both gonna live and we wanted the fight to be sort of split up, not our own. It wasn't our own doing, you know. We would have uh, fought to the death, but but um, I'm thrown onto the boat and um, Clive's on his barge. But there's some uh, amazing the stuff from those, all those scenes that in um, episode 10, the boat stuff, the stuff that they did turning over the boats, and um, it's an incredible stunt team we have, you know. And I don't think I'll ever experience being on boats like that. And um, such great action. <coughs> in not many days, too, we don't get the big budget stuff, you know. So um, I think it's amazing what Michael writes for it, and all the stunt team are brilliant. So which one of you guys came away more bruised from that? Was it Rollo or Ragnar? Oh, did, we did it. We did it all ourselves. So it was take after take, and, and some of these fists, you know, were quite I got quite you cool. once. So I think we both... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely caught me a few times. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was, I mean, that was the whole cast was really fighting in that scene. It was, it was pretty incredible. Um, um, Alexander, I wanted to ask you. You know, do you you had some great scenes as well? Do you keep in touch? Do you keep in touch with the bear? Are, are you guys friends? <laughs> as, uh, Whopper and I are Facebook friends. So. <laughs> now it was actually the, uh, the the bear from Anchorman, so I was a huge fan of its work. <laughs> it had a better bigger resume than I did as well, so yeah, I was kind of starstruck. <laughs> no, it was a blast. So it was, it's one of those things where you. Uh, you're on set and you're just, you know, this is why you do the job. It, you get to do things that, you know, your average day person wouldn't have a chance to do. And it was just incredible. It was actually uh, myself and then this Kodiak bear. Um, in, no more from myself to you guys here. And it was, we were separated by a, a clothesline. And the bear is brought up to believe that the clothesline is electric. But it's not. It's just a clothesline. <laughs> so I'm waiting for them to have to rewrite the whole scene after the bear gets hungry and <laughs> and realizes that this line is not doing anything. But it was, you know, it was it was an incredible experience, and it's one of the one of the great moments of uh, of my life that I'll, I'll I'll never forget. Well, it was it was a pretty incredible incredible scene to watch. Now, when the Vikings go to battle, I mean, they are raiding, but they're also preserving their civilization. And I think um, Gustav Floki has a, is the most quintessential of all the Vikings. He is the one who is so faithful to the gods. And I'm whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Hold on a second. Lagertha is very faithful to the gods, too. You think, you think Lagertha true. has That's it true. on? Oh, yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> oh, yeah, she believes in all the gods. And definitely, she's very, yeah, she slept, she, oh, yeah. <clears throat> she slept with a Christian king. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Boom. You know what? <laughs> it was just, just putting it out there. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Loki she, would yeah. never had sex with uh, with King <laughs> Expert. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not because he's not gay. Yeah, which of you has done more sacrifices? You've both been pretty handy in that no, way. I think I've killed so many different people and goats and animals, and I think I've, as a Norse, no. Believer, I think Magatha is pretty. Uh, she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this question relates to both of your storylines. I mean, um, Gustav, do you think that Floki redeemed himself when he was asked to sort of train Ivar, the from, boneless? From Floki's perspective, he never was in need for any redemption. Um, he feels that that he did what he had to do to, to protect Ragnar from a false faith uh, by killing Athelstan. Um, the underlying emotional motives behind that, was there jealousy involved? I would think so, but I don't think uh, that Floki has the emotional um, understanding of himself to realize that. So he would definitely justify these acts through his religion. Uh, so he doesn't feel like he's in any, in any way in need of redemption. However, I do th think that he felt that, um, um, that it was nice that he got some recognition by, from Aslog uh, when she comes to him with Ivar, um, that someone has seen his, his loyalty and his faith and, and his, his struggle. 
And you said that you thought he had some things in common with, um, with Ivar. Yeah, they're both, they're both kind of outcasts in a way, um, Floki and Ivar. Ivar because of his physical impairment and Floki because he's Floki, you know? Um, so I think that there's definitely a really strong connection between Ivor and Floki and that, that they're, they're a bit special, you know, these guys. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a strong okay. bond between them. Well, um, Catherine, uh, Oslog has quite a few kids. <coughs> um, I'm wondering if Lagertha Ever feels like she needs to get revenge on Oslog for marrying Ragnar? What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Michael? Um, <Hi. laughs> I, I do have to say that there is one really epic scene with Lagertha and Oslog, and I'm excited for you guys to see it. <laughs> I don't know how much I can actually give away, um, but also to echo what Gustav said is I don't think Lagertha is really a revengeful person. She um, is also trying to do what's right for the people, and she truly believes Kattegat is a place, is her home, and it should be ruled properly under the right care. and. Now that Ragnar's off doing his own thing, and I think that she is definitely has her eye on taking care of her home. So, so we can pretty much assume it's not a love scene between Lagertha and Oslug. Say it again. No, it's not a love scene between. Oh, there's a lot of making out. Yes, there is. Um, uh, how do I answer that? Is, is it a love scene? There's, there's, there's definitely some, some contact. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, fans always want to know, Catherine mm -hmm. and Travis, will, will Lagertha and Ragnar ever be together again? I mean, you know, Lagertha's pretty single after <laughs> 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 what happened. <laughs> Relax, she's got the clap. <laughs> He is a small penis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has a small penis. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Birthday boy is out of control. <laughs> At least it speaks French. <laughs> the little guy. <laughs> um. I don't know, it's a bit scary. Uh, it'd be scary to get back with um, Lagatha. I mean, what do you mean? well, just you kill all your husbands. <laughs> Guys, don't fight. <laughs> Aww, our baby boy well, wants us to get We're not fighting, that's what we do. <laughs> you gotta admit, though, no one's like Lagatha. Huh? <laughs> he screwed up, didn't he? <laughs> kind of right did, kind of did. Um, Michael, what do you think? Would you, you know, you said you want to see Ragnar and Eckbert together again. Do you want to see these two together again? Um, oh. Nothing would make me happier. Well, we like Michael Hurst to be happy. So, um, now you, you have... Uh, great long-term relationships with actors and and one thing I wanted to talk about before we go to the audience questions is we have um, a new character coming up in season five and that's played by Jonathan Riss Myers who you worked with on Tudors. <laughs> what can you tell us about that character and how he kind of plays into season five? Um, well firstly it's it's um, it's fantastic news to, to have Johnny on board. Um, he's a great actor. He has extraordinary presence. Um, he won't be playing a Viking. Uh, he'll be playing uh, a very interesting and a new kind of, of character. And um, I'm not going to spoil the surprise of, of who and what that, that is. 
um, only that it, it, is, um, it is a major role and, um, you know, he's, um, he's started working and it's going to be fantastic. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to, to seeing that and we're looking forward to the second half of four. It's going to be the one thing that makes the end of summer okay because it comes back in the fall. There are, there are two episodes in what we have to call 4B, the next 10 episodes. These two episodes are the best episodes we've done uh, ever, quite extraordinary episodes. And I can't wait for you all, as the best fans in the world, to see them. Yeah. Well, now I know that this panel wants to hear from you guys, so we're going to start taking the audience questions. When you come to the mic, uh, let us know your name, because this cast really does want to know who you are, and then tell us who the question is for, and we'll get you your answer. So let's get started. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. It's, it's, it's more like two parts. Loki, welcome. First mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. That was uh, a, four years ago? Was it three, four, years, three years ago? You didn't come in last year. I've been busy. <laughs> Can you tell us your fan encounters out in the world? You walk, go to a bar, people recognize you. That's for all of you guys. Thank you. My name is Beto. Okay. Um, you know, let's. I, I know that Catherine's had some recently fan encounters. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> do you want to explain the story? I, okay, so I was coming out of dinner yesterday into the hotel, and this wonderful woman had her shirt, and she wanted me to sign <laughs> her, her chest, and thank gosh she came yes! to see me. <laughs> Is she there? Oh, yes. hello. Hey. There she is. <laughs> right there. I'm Alex on the Ludwig's flip flop. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that real? He's going to have to wear it. Oh, shit. How am I getting home? <laughs> Get him to carry you. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Let us know your name and who the question's for. Okay. Hi, my name is Sky, and my question is for Catherine Winnick. Hi, Sky. Um, I do Taekwondo, and I'm a red belt. Hell, good job. Yeah. All right. Yes. Red belt means she's close to black belt, so congratulations. Thank you. I was wondering how you went from Taekwondo to acting, because I want to do both. Great. Oh, you want to too? Okay, um, I started doing Taekwondo at the age of seven. I got my first black belt at 13 and I started a, a Taekwondo school when I was 16. So I started teaching actors martial arts on movie sets before I was an actor. And I used to, I remember the first time I was on a set, it was just such an amazing, incredible experience because every day is completely different. And um, I worked my way up, and that's how I, I got to it. So you, definitely you can do it, and let's give her a hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's sweet. Hi. Aw, thank you. Love you, too. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, my name's Vox. Um, I don't actually have a question, but I have gifts for three of you. So, sorry, not everyone. Three. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. There's six of us. It's, I Aww. So, <laughs> it's this is awkward. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh. It's for the bearded men that don't already have deals with beard oil companies. <laughs> cool. We can so, pick those up after the panel. Do you have a, a question for them, or? Uh, nope, you guys are awesome. Okay. <laughs> we'll come find you, okay? Hi. Hi, my name's Coco. Hi, Coco. Can I have some vodka? <laughs> uh, uh oh. It's like the best question of the panel. <laughs> oh, no, hey, come here. Go, go. No, you want to? Yeah. Oh. You guys have now officially been at a Viking feast in the Great Hall. All of you. <laughs> Hi. How's it going, guys? Um, I'm Ben, and uh, speaking of substances, 
Um, Travis, you had to deal with some serious addiction, and I was uh, curious if you have to do any uh, research or studying to get acclimated to that role for the season. <laughs> Um. <laughs> There's your answer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty guilty. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. <laughs> what are all you guys doing in my bedroom? <laughs> I mean, those those scenes were very tough to watch. It was tough to see a character who had been so strong descend into that kind of weakness, addiction, dependency, um, was it tough to shoot them? Um, nah, was, it... <laughs> <laughs> uh. You need your Chinese medicine right now, obviously. Took his brother to beat the okay. drugs out of him, though. <laughs> yeah. But Travis doesn't experiment with drugs, just Viagra, so. <laughs> what did you say? Ooh. I can't hear you, I'm drunk. What? You mumble. <laughs> what did you say? He said he just experiment with Viagra. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> there are children. How do you, how do you yeah. think I get up in the morning, mate? Come on. Hi there. Children. Let us know your name and the question. Okay. My name is Desiree. I'm super nervous. Um, I just want to say I love the show. I love you all. I think you're all beautiful. Travis, you're my favorite. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and um, my question is, we always know that you're a really big prankster. And last year when Alexander put a chair out in front of you, I was wondering who's the biggest prankster and if you have any stories to tell us that we don't know. Um, there hasn't been that many. I think they got Alex with his hair this year. Oh my God. Oh, let's hear it. <laughs> we're, at, we're at entertainment. Oh no, I was saying your look on the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> No, we were at Entertainment Weekly earlier today, and I have no idea how, but Travis found a, a damn it, a paint roller. It had like a bunch of blue paint on it, and I'm like in the middle of an interview, and he just like just painted my entire face blue. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what it's like on this show. <laughs> it was just your cry for help from Alexander Ludwig. You don't know what it's like. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, I got one more for you. Also, Travis, I don't think I've ever told this story. Travis was, uh, went, we have to use porta potties when we're going out in the middle oh, of the woods. Yeah, yeah. And Travis walked into the porta potty and. I'm going to show the video from last night. And, right? I, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I pushed it over. <laughs> <laughs> and Travis walks out going, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was nasty. It was nasty. It was I disgusting. It. it was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. But this is after years of abuse. Like, I've earned a few <laughs> pranks, okay? I'll get you back, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. Hi. I'm Sonia. I Hi, love Sonia. you guys. You guys are all amazing. Lagatha, you're kick ass. I love your character. There should be more women characters like yours. Yeah. Thank you. And kick ass, fake names, and just don't mess around. Your priorities are straight, family <coughs> first, and everything else just falls into place. I love it. I Thank love you. I love it. Um, I'm just curious. You guys are so comfortable and honed into your own characters. Was there ever a point in the beginning where you were like, I'd like to I wonder what it would have been like if I had done a different character. What character would that have been? Oh, wow. Mm. I think, um, uh, if, if you don't mind, I just want to yeah. take this one really quickly. I think, actually, I, I'm a bit of an example of that because it, it was strange because I really feel like I've grown up on this show, you know, um, since when I first started. And Michael did me a huge favor by writing this wilderness scene because I told him, you know, we spoke of this, like, I need to go and come back a different person. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Bjorn can't be this perfect son, you know, he's got to have flaws, he's got to be different, you know, um, and, and Michael did me the biggest favor by allowing that, and um, so in a way, I was able to transform from this, you know, this, this kid into, into a young man, and that, that was the best thing he could have possibly done for me, so that's my answer to your question. And just to add to but what, what actually happens is that these 
uh, characters you see here are created by me and the actors. Um, it's sometimes a symbiotic relationship, but anyway, it's a creative relationship that the actors are helping me to form their characters. And, um, and it's great, it's one of the great advantages <laughs> of working in series TV that you have the time and opportunity to go deeper into characters, develop them, show their contradictions perhaps. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a great blessing for me to work over a significant and long amount of time with these, particularly with these guys here on the stage. Definitely, it's, it's yeah. a great collection of actors and together you guys are smashing it. And I great. Appreciate it. Man, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys are thank incredible, you. I, so thank you so much. Can you do me I, one favor? Yeah. Can you just say hi to Greg, he's my husband. He's What's his name? Uh, oh, you're hi. recording this. Greg? Hi, Greg. Greg. <laughs> Hey, Greg. Greg? Uh, Greg? Hey, Greg, what's up? <laughs> Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Hi, next question, please. Hi, what's your name? How's it going? Uh, I'm Howard. And uh, my question is actually similar to hers, though. I love the show, love you guys, but instead of asking something for myself, uh, I'm going to ask a favor. I want you guys to say hi to my friend Kimmy. She couldn't get tickets to Comic Con this year. <laughs> and when she found out about your panel, she was literally in tears. Uh, so I want you guys to just say hi to her on Snapchat real quick. And uh, if you guys could do that, that'd be awesome. Awesome. We'll do that. Hi, Kimmy. Hey, Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy. Hey. Sorry you can't be here. Hey, oh. Now. Now. Hey, Kimmy. Hey, Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy. <laughs> Sorry you can't be Great. here. Lots of love. Don't cry. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. OK. We've got quite a line here. So hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Amin, and I'm from Morocco. So you guys have fans in Morocco. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, I'm here with my wife. She has a question. I don't have a question. I have a request. I really want to. Oh, dang! I forgot to do that. Sorry. Let's let's well, you know what. Let's get to yeah. questions because people are waiting I have, in line. I have a request actually. I really want to listen to Floki's love life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, to reconnect to the previous question, it was like, what would it have been like if I wouldn't have chosen a, in a hotel room that laughter before we started shooting the first episode of season one? What if I would have gone like, <laughs> it wouldn't have been the same. So I was literally sitting in my hotel room in the middle of the night going. <laughs> Great. Can you imagine how okay. scared the neighbors next door were <laughs> listening to Gustav? Yeah, I had to kill them. Okay. So from now on, you guys, we're going to keep it to questions so everybody in the room can hear and there's quite a long line. So what, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Skyla. My question is, um, I'm a little confused by the shaman who's here, uh, the hand licking thing. And I know in the one episode he licked Floki's hand. So I'm kind of curious, I'm assuming that that's going to mean something in future seasons. But um, is there some kind of significance? Is it like a sign of respect? Or are we just Michael? have to wait to find out what that means? I want to throw that question right back at you. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. It's just a weird thing. I kind of think that Floki is, gonna, is some kind of god. So, or some kind of... Thank you, creature. thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. And then one last thing. Um, would you mind just saying hi to my friends Aladdin? No. no. Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys, What's we got to go to the next question. Everyone Can we get the next hi. person up here, please? <laughs> oh, oh, no. We want everybody to be able to ask their questions. Hi. Vivi. Hi, Catherine. My name is Deb Heller. Hi. And a friend of mine, Gaynell, she's the one that did my hair, and she's very terrified. Oh, you got the braids on. Good job. I got this hair. <laughs> Thank you. We just want to know how long does it take for your hairstylist to do your hair? It usually takes 45 minutes to an hour to get all those braids, and she, everything is done that she it's it's a it's a long process it's in the sense where a lot of thought goes into every hairstyle if i'm conveying a, a warrior hairstyle is one thing something different if it's before or after the time jump if it's lag within a softer look um it, or if she's more vulnerable and even just pieces down so everything is we sit down and we break down the script and we work through okay how do we tell the story just by an image and your hair um, and I think that's really been amazing now just to see the braids showing up on red carpets and showing up in fashion magazines and um, 
And for me, when I first started with Lagatha, I, I wanted to come up with like something that was strong and also different. And that's why you kind of got the two signature braids and it's fun to do. I right. thought Rollo had the best haircut <laughs> this season. Yeah. Hi, okay, next question. Yeah, can we just do one, 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 one thing? Where's, where's the, where's, uh, hey, where, what hey, do you need? Hey. Come, come here, let's, let's say hi really quickly. Uh, we can't do it anymore, but let's, cause, you, cause everybody else, let's just come do it really quickly. Huh. What's, what's her name? My name is Skylar. Skylar, what's the, what, when you wanted to say hi to you? Oh, Aladdin and Gigi. Okay, let's go. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, here she goes. Hi Aladdin, hi hey, ZZZ. Hi Aladdin. What's up? Hey ZZ. Hey, ZZ. Hey, ZZ. <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Love us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> that was very nice of you, very sweet. I just wanted to look really nice. I'm actually a huge asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hello, my name is Maquette, and um, I'm such a big fan of the show, and I can't even imagine, you can't imagine, my sister has done so much research based on the Vikings because of this show, so thank awesome. you for inspiring a great Yeah. Show. Awesome. As a proud Viking and as a proud San Diegan, and since you've been to Comic-Con so many years now, what is your favorite thing to do in San Diego while you're here? I think I know Travis's answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's meeting you guys. You guys yeah. rock. There We're the go. reason we come back every year. We have the best fans in the world, and thank you. Yeah. Great, hi, what's your oh. name? Hello, I'm Sean. I'm a huge fan. I've been getting you guys to sign my shield each year, except for you, Alex, and Scott. I well, sorry, it. Sean. You've never asked me. Don't, be okay. nice <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So what's your, what's your question? Um, my question is for Mr. Host, and the question is that over the years, we've seen Kattegat evolve from a simple fishing town to a large trading um, City and in the last episode, we've seen Arab tra uh, spice traders in the mud, and I was wondering that in the next season, would there be any more um, evolutions of the city? Um, hmm. It's 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 pretty maxed out now. I think it's uh, it's <laughs> it's, but but you're right. That was a big thing, to um, to make the point that. Um, you know, the Vikings are going on ever more ambitious raids. Um, it, you know, this, the Viking age is well underway now. And in, across Scandinavia at the moment, they're doing a lot of uh, digging and archaeology and, and finding new trading posts, bigger trading posts. Um, uh, but the thing about the spice is that I, I would, there's a wonderful book uh, out called The Spice Road. Um, it is about 500 pages long, but nevertheless, um, it, it shows that the Vikings were on the, uh, the sorry, the Silk Road. It, it shows that the Vikings were on the Silk Road trading with the Chinese and the Arabs uh, 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 before they were raiding in, in the West. Uh, and it, it opened my eyes to uh, a, a lot of things I didn't know, uh, which this whole project has done, by the way. So, I, you know, read that. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Great, thank you, thank you so much. Hi there, what's your name? Oh, I like your shield. <laughs> Show that to everybody. <laughs> Woo! Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, my name is Regina, and I want to know, you were talking about how Ragnar <laughs> has a big connection with his sons. What about his son with Quinfred? Is he ever gonna go and like, find this kid and find out about him? <laughs> uh, really, that's, that would be a spoiler alert. <laughs> so you've kind of just confirmed it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> if you ever need another writer, he writes all of the episodes, you know, all by himself, but she might, you know, she might be a good hire for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Amber. We met earlier. Um, first of all, Michael, thank you for writing such strong female characters. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? It is, I feel so blessed, and Michael can write women, and we need more female characters out there, more female directors out there, more female screenwriters. So thank you, Michael, for having our back and creating such and a character. Thank you, Catherine.
for just being so badass. And oh. <laughs> well, um, my question is for all of you guys, who have been the strong, inspirational, inspirational women in your lives? It could be characters, it can be, like I know Catherine, for you, you said Elizabeth the first, like it could be real people, who? Who is it for you? Well, this, I think I, Michael doesn't write, I don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about term and phrase, but I don't think Michael writes strong women. I think he writes women. Yeah. Um, and Thank you. you think it's, yeah. Because my inspiration is my mum and my wife and my daughter. I have three women in my life, and I see them all on screen portrayed, whether it be with Lagatha or Aslaug mm -hmm. or, or all of the characters, all the female characters. The problem lies with so many other shows that seem to you know, dictate that women need to be saved by men from other men. Oh my God. And, and that's, <laughs> and, Just and, 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 you know, and, and some women might now and again, occasionally like yeah. the fantasy of being saved by a man, but there is more to women than, than, than how it's portrayed. And that's, that's the problem. It's the problem is also not saying strong women, because as long as it's referred to as people are going, this strong, I mean, how many times at the Oscars do you get, do you get actors that get up on stage uh, and the male figures, they don't go, and all these strong men playing these strong, yeah. Male characters, Leonardo DiCaprio, Clint Eastwood, they're just men. But suddenly answer. it's kind of like Charlie Theron and all these people that are nominated for Oscars, they're always introduced as like, all these women have played strong female characters this year. I so guess, well, Clive, one second, I think it's also really giving women a voice and a platform, and I think that's what this show does, and I'm proud of it. I also think, I, I thought about the, the definition of strong women, I think it's kind of that kind of implies strength as a means to kind of endure whatever a woman has to suffer. Uh, so I don't want to see strong women. I want to see powerful women. Yeah. yeah. You know the difference. Because that's the you know, thing. What's it's the not about like you, Sky. It's about you know taking power. Taekwondo to the top. Because yeah. the strength of Vikings is, I think, the strength of Vikings. I think Michael agree is that that human beings really haven't changed much since the ninth century. It's, yeah, all of that stuff is the backdrop, the, the gods, the monsters, all that stuff is just the backdrop. It's just about human beings. And women and men are no different. Women haven't changed since the ninth century. It's just mm -hmm. the way they've been betrayed in the media that's changed. Right. Thank you. And, um, mm -hmm. and if anyone wait, that, please send it to me. We, we, we need to wrap up. We need to go to, I know, I, I want this to go on for hours, but we need to go to our preview of the second half of season four. So take a look at these powerful people. My father has returned. Perhaps he should not have come back. Your father's return brings calamity, chaos, tragedy, and death. I am not afraid. You should curse the day. You know I must go back to England. You should have gone back a long time ago. This map is the Mediterranean Sea. I need safe passage from my fleet. But I cannot deny that part of myself which is still Viking. I want you to know that I can never forgive you for taking away my husband and my world. you, my son, that one day the whole world will know and fear Ivar the Boneless. We assemble an army twice the size of the army our father took to Paris. Oh, you must seek revenge. We don't just declare war in England. The Ramis. How big are the Ramis? Hundreds? Thousands? Tell me. I need to know. Damn you! We declare war on the whole world. Be ruthless. Don't be afraid.